Hey Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and I'm collaborating with Paradox Interactive to bring you this tutorial on factions in Age of Wonders 4. Your faction is going to be the main decision that you have to make before you start playing a game of Age of Wonders 4, and the real meat of the system is the ability to create your own custom factions from a huge array of abilities. We'll be covering each aspect of a faction, including the physical forms and traits, the culture and society traits, the first tome, and the faction leader. But before we get to that, I want to show you some of the factions that come pre-made for you to explore the game with. There are a variety of pre-made factions worth trying out. Alfred Elderstone leads the Destined Humans, for example. They're a great choice if you're looking for a gentle, straightforward faction to play your first game with a focus on diplomacy, support magic, and their economy. If you're more inclined towards evil endeavours, you might find yourself drawn instead to Gloom Hooknail of the Corrupted Goblins, who fuels his empire with his fallen enemies, both economically and militarily, gaining extra loot and using the souls of fallen foes to raise undead monstrosities. There are a good few pre-made factions in here, so don't be afraid to try them out for a few turns to get a feel for them. Just pick one from the list that sounds cool and see how they play. Next, I'm going to talk to you about Warlord Sniff of the Little Grabby Horde, which is a faction I custom made for this video. This faction is designed to dominate the early game and snowball into an unstoppable force of swarming ratmen. After you've chosen a realm to play on, you'll be prompted to pick a faction to play. If you instead click on Create Faction, you'll be brought to this screen where we can now start to talk about the physical form of your faction and faction creation in general. The physical form of your faction will dictate their appearance and their default traits. There's a variety of choices here, everything from humans, elves, dwarves and orcs, all the way to more unusual choices like toadmen, molkin and feline. Each of these forms comes with a default set of traits. For example, dwarves are tough and have defensive tactics, making them especially resilient to damage. Orcs, on the other hand, are strong and ferocious, giving them the ability to deal a lot more damage, especially with retaliation and opportunity attacks. Personally, I feel an affinity with the Ratkin, so that's what I'm choosing. Each form in Age of Wonders 4 has two important traits, body and mind. The body trait has to do with the physical world. I'm going to change my Ratkin from having quick reflexes to having keen sighted, which will give them bonus accuracy on physical and magical range attacks. There's no limitations on body and mind traits, so you can mix and match all you want. If you want to make a faction of super strong bloodthirsty halfling barbarians or magically gifted toadmen who hurl bolts of lightning, then that is absolutely something you can choose to do. Mind traits have more to do with the mentality of your faction. Are they sneaky, ferocious or adaptable? I'm a big fan of overwhelm tactics. I can't explain why my neurons just get activated when I see those big critical hit numbers. So anything that gives critical hit chance is absolutely welcome. Once you've selected your body and mind trait, you can move on to picking your culture and society traits. These choices have a big impact on gameplay. Not only does it affect your affinity, which is a topic that will be covered in a future video in this series, it heavily alters how your faction's units and economies function. While every society has overlap between the types of units and buildings they have available, there is a lot of difference in how they actually play. Feudal support units are bannermen, focused on area of effect healing and buffing, whereas the dark culture doesn't even get a support unit by default, instead focusing on dealing as much damage as possible and sustaining themselves through the suffering of their enemies. We'll be picking the barbarian culture today, which focuses on growing cities and recruiting units with their strong food and draft income. Barbarian units also have the Primal Strike ability, allowing them to deal burst damage with their first melee attack in a battle. Finally, the Ritual of Alacrity will allow us to use Force March much more judiciously and with less consequences, giving us a massive boost to our map mobility. Next, we need to pick our society traits. We'll be taking Prolific Swarmers for a few reasons. First, our cities will grow faster, giving us a stronger economy. Second, our low tier units will start at a higher rank, improving their combat abilities. Third, our entire non-magical army will have reduced upkeep, allowing us to field larger armies. And the final reason is that we will get an extra tier 1 unit at the start of the game, which will give us a much stronger starting position and a lot of early game tempo. The second trait we'll be taking is Fabled Hunters. The map in Age of Wonders 4 is covered in things for you to fight over and loot. Getting twice as much loot will front load a bunch of resources in the early game that we can use to snowball out of control. We'll also start with another extra ranged unit. All of our ranged and skirmisher units will start at a higher rank. When you're building your own faction, take your time to read each ability, or just pick the ones that sound cool to you and try them out. There aren't really wrong choices, just interesting combinations. Next up, we'll be picking our first tome. The first tome is an important decision. It will set the pace for your faction. Tomes are so important that they'll be covered in more detail in a future tutorial in this series. Today we'll be taking the Tome of the Horde, because the mob camp combos really well with the rest of our abilities and decisions. 
The final piece of the puzzle is the faction leader design. You have three important choices to make here. The first is whether you want to be a champion or a wizard king. Wizard kings are interdimensional conquerors who don't need to match the physical form of your faction, as in the lore they have essentially subjugated, dominated, or liberated the faction they are leading. You could choose to have a human leading Molkin into battle, for example, if they're a wizard king. Champions, on the other hand, are heroes of the race that they come from. They are a notable leader who rose to the ranks to lead their people. For this reason, champions must have the same race as their faction. Champions have increased gold income and city stability, perfect for having a strong non-magical economy to support a large swarm of units like we plan to. They excel at supporting and training up large armies of troops, as well as diplomacy with free cities. The Wizard King is much more magically focused, able to generate more mana to support their empire, cast more spells both in battle and on the strategic map, and even over channel to cast two spells in a single battle turn. Great for summoning lots of units and casting lots of spells. We'll be picking champion for our faction. The next choice you have to make is to choose the equipment for your faction leader. Each type of equipment sets up your hero's archetype at the start of the game. Axe and shield is for defensively focused frontliners. The bow is a physical range damage dealer, and the staff is for support heroes focused on buffing up and healing their troops. I personally love support heroes, so I'll be taking the staff. The final and most important decision you need to make is to choose what hat your faction leader is going to wear. If you're going to be wading into battle, you absolutely do not want to be doing so looking underdressed. We'll be wearing a custom fitted bear helmet made by Louis Ratatouille. You can customize an awful lot about your faction leader, anything from the clothing, body shape and poses. Don't forget to give your faction a custom banner, color scheme and physical look before you name them and move on to actually playing the game. That covers the absolute basics of putting together a faction in Age of Wonders 4. Don't be afraid to experiment, try out weird combinations or make factions designed around being extremely strong in one particular area. The next tutorial in this series will cover realms, the actual worlds you'll be playing in Age of Wonders 4. If you want to join the little grabby ratkin horde, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to check the description of the video for more information and leave a comment to let me know your opinion on my faction leader's fashion style. That's it for me, I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye!